The Prime Minister's move to end the school's funding war, promising record spending in next week's budget. And in a major surprise, the government's recruited the high-profile architect of Labor's funding model. The Prime Minister with big barks and a big promise. We will get Australian students back to the top of the class. With record funding, a 75% increase over 10 years, climbing to $30.6 billion in 2027 for public and private schools. This is a landmark day for Australian schools. Making sure that these billions of dollars are translated into extraordinary outcomes extraordinary life-changing outcomes. The needs-based formula will replace over 20 separate deals with the states. The time has come to bring the school funding wars to an end. The government went back to the drawing board and found the answer already there. The David Gonski model they ditched in 2013. His Gonski 2.0 review will decide how best to spend the money. I'm very pleased to hear that the Turnbull government has accepted the fundamental recommendations of our 2011 report. Anything that David Gonski is involved in, no doubt, will be done at the highest possible standard. But... She says the government's numbers don't add up. This is a $22 billion cut. I think this is an act of political bastardry. The government believes embracing the original Gonski review and having him on board will be a political positive and help negate the Labor attacks. Lane Kelcutt, Nine News. Pauline Hanson has her own plan to get university loans repaid faster. She wants all students to begin giving money back once they start earning $22,000 a year, less than half of the current $54,000 threshold and below the minimum wage. We've got to get to a stage where the taxpayer cannot fund everything. If you want a, far, right. a, if you want a higher education, well then you've got to start putting your own hand in your own pocket. Her suggested 2% pay repayments on a $22,000 wage would see students pay back about $8 a week.